Hey Ken folks, so this episode is me trying to figure out how to make armor plates on a budget. Um, I drink a lot of milk, like so, and I know that uh, HTB plates are a thing. They're very lightweight and they can handle most rifle rounds. And if you get it thick enough, you could possibly even block, you know, green tips or armor piercing rounds and things like that. So. Um, that's something to check out. I'm going to try and get it uh, nice and thick and I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So um, yeah, hey, if you guys like this episode, be sure to hit that like, sub, and share. And if it was helpful and entertaining in any way, then check out all my, um, my supports like my Ko-Fi, my Patreon, and my Etsy. And all of those things go a long way to help me out and keep this channel rolling and come up with really crazy cool ideas to help protect you guys out there. So yeah. Let's get started. Okay, so your first step in this whole process is to clean it out. You don't want anything in between the, the layers of plastic. You want it to stick to itself and not to the, to the milk or the, uh, the soap. So when you rinse it out, make sure it's nice and clear. It's a little tedious, but and make sure you do this as soon as you have an empty plastic bottle. Otherwise it piles up and it's a pain in the butt. So HDPE comes in all sorts of packaging from soap bottles to honey bottles. Plastic water bottles and soda bottles are not good enough. Make sure you check the bottom of this plastic to make sure it's HDEP, HDPE plastic. Uh, that so that little triangle with a two in it, that's a good indicator as well if you don't have those letters. So this is how I process these milk jugs. I cut it down one corner and then I just cut off the bottom. And this is the easiest, most efficient way to cut up these milk jugs. There's nice flat surfaces and they're just easier to cut the rest of it up. So you wanna quarter it down the corners. And then when it comes to the handle, you just want to clip the handle like so. And then that gives you easy access to the final corner to cut here. Now, when it comes to each piece, you want to dry it out. Um, you don't want anything, no water in between each layer. And this is a good way to go about it. Just make sure it's nice and dry. And then you want to start cutting down into little strips about a half inch is good enough and that's going to help us out in the next step of the process. Make sure that you cut this handle up down the center like so and that will give you access to dry it out and put it in the rest of the pile. Don't use labels. It's just a pain in the butt to clean up and try and get them to work and it's just not worth the effort. Um, I'm going to show you the reason why. It's just so difficult. It tends to shred and you leave paper and glue behind and it's just a pain in the butt. They're really not worth it. Um, you know, just set them to the side. When you're ready, just toss them out. Now, not all labels are like that. Some just peel right off with no residue. Those are great. Now, if you're wondering if some plastic is too thick to process and if you're, you know, if your scissors can handle it, you can. But if it's really hard, don't put it into your blender right here because um, it will mess up your blender. And so I just pile in the strips. Not a whole lot, just enough. Make sure you use hearing protection. This is gonna be a very loud and annoying process. It just is. And, uh, and again, as soon as you get an empty jug or an empty bottle, process it. It's just an easy process. The whole thing will take you about 10 minutes for each jug. And collect it in a little plastic bag. And you want a confetti-like um, size to it. So you want about two bags worth. And each bag is probably around five pounds each, five to six pounds a piece. Now you wanna prep your little container where you're gonna melt the plastic. This is a little lasagna tray. And I just left about three handfuls of this plastic on the bottom to start with. A little bit of a milk jug bay there. You set it to 350. Put it in the middle rack. If you have convention, that would be even better. Set it to 10 minutes. Make sure you leave the vent on because it's going to get pretty warm in that kitchen. And if there's any kind of uh, fumes, you want it to soak up, suck it up into that vent there. 
and the color of the the plastic you want is clear as clear as you can get it then it's ready for another layer and any kind of kneading process as you can see that's pretty clear the best method of getting the plastic to separate from the parchment paper is a knife as you can see it's just nice and easy it kind of picks at it picks it up and then you want to knead it like dough so all the plastic is kind of stretched out elongated and woven into each other and get a nice solid block of plastic. Now as I progress and added more plastic, uh, the harder it was to knead and um, it tended to want to stay in a big ball and it didn't want to flatten out and it was counterproductive to actually making a plate, an armored plate. So what I ended up doing is just adding a bunch of um, layers. I would just put in a layer and then melt it and then um, you know mash it down and then put on another layer and uh, that seemed to get me as far as I did um, so the reason why I'm doing this armor is because well one I want to recycle these old uh, milk jugs and I, I'm pretty sure you can make a very lightweight piece of armor from it and so wouldn't it be great to have like this armor that in a post-apocalyptic post world where you can uh, scrounge for materials to create things. And this is a really good method, if not for armor, for just plastic parts. And you can make a plate and then machine something out of it or you know, fabricate a part out of it. But also, if you were just flat broke or just in, you don't have anything but your hand and maybe a source of heat, you can make armor at home. And that's just a really cool idea. And you know, if you just have a heat source and a source of plastic or just get enough plastic scrounged together, that would just be awesome if you can just get some body armor. You can get a whole family kitted out with body armor because you guys are already drinking milk, for the, probably. And then you can just reuse those milk jokes for something more, you know, practical. So here we are at the end of the process. We've got about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters of just a plastic sheet there. And so the uh, first thing you want to do is put down more parchment paper to make sure that you, the plastic doesn't stick to the wood board. And you're going to need four clamps. And I put those clamps on and I had a little piece of wood underneath on the bottom of the pan. So that way I wasn't mangling my pan too much. And you want to just really crank this thing down to mash it down. You want to make sure that this plastic... Um, the, and it just, it's going to shrink a little bit, but you also want to make sure those layers attach and there's no voids or any gaps. And here is the big reveal. As you can see, those uh, clamps really did dent. Even with those little pieces of wood, it dented the pan quite a bit. So this is kind of a sacrificial pan here. And um, it tended to shrink a little bit, as you can see. It just kind of wrinkled and shrank a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. I think maybe next time I'll make an actual form for it and uh, really crank it down on that form. And it won't give way like that little aluminum pan did. So this ended up being about six and a half pounds and an inch and a half thick. The reason why is because I wanted to minimize the amount of space and weight. Like I want it to be an inch and a half and I didn't, I wanted to maximize protection. And this is the experiment. So now that we have our plate, we're going to do our little experiment by shooting some rounds off on it and I'll let you know how it goes. Hey Ken folks, so the results are in, but before I get into all of that, if you guys like this episode, then hit the like, share, sub, all that good stuff. It really does go a long way to help support the channel and grow my audience. And it helps me support myself. So also, if you guys want to support me in the short term, Ko-Fi, long term, Patreon, and if you guys want to buy some cool stuff, go to my Etsy. You guys know all that stuff. I'm not going to go into the big spiel, but all of these things are really, really helpful for me. In fact, you're seeing the fruits of that labor with this camera setup. This is all brand new. This is the first time I've used it. And let me know what you guys think. And uh, all of this is because of your efforts, and I really do appreciate it. Sincerely, sincerely appreciative of that. Thank you. So on to the results. Good news and bad news. Good news is it's bulletproof. Bad news is not against rifle rounds. Um, so this bad boy right up here, that's from a 5.56. That's a rifle round. And um, it did not work. It <laughs> blew right through it. Didn't even slow it down. Didn't even warp the plastic. And uh, if this would be right behind you, that's, that's a kill right there. 
it totally wouldn't work. And there's a lot of effort that went into this. Um, I shot with some 9 mils, 38, and uh, 357 Magnum down here. And uh, it stopped the 357 Magnum cold, easy. And uh, so what ended up happening with the, uh, we shot it with a 38, and the 38 actually bounced back. As you can see, it just flattened the tip, and it bounced it back almost you know 180 degrees it went in and then went out this way just very slightly and uh we weren't anywhere near it but it bounced back about 30 feet and uh it just didn't want to have enough to like actually hurt anybody but you get the idea kind of dangerous stuff so be prepared take precautions all that stuff um so uh i've noticed that the two nine mils here uh this one and this one this one actually penetrated about an inch this one about an inch and a half which is very interesting results. And you take a look at the back here. Um, this actually delaminated a little bit. And that means the plastic didn't attach to itself. It melted, but it didn't really adhere to the plastic around it. And I'm wondering why. And uh, so uh, if I actually cut the bottom piece off and you notice that there are voids here and all these little pockets where the plastic's not supporting itself. And so that's concerning, very concerning. So. Um, I could have, you know, if I reflect back on the, you know, manufacturing process, I could have done two things. One, I could have heated up the plastic a bit more to where I got a better adhesion, where it's more liquid and it'll kind of attach to itself more um, effectively. Two, I could have kneaded it a bit more effectively. So I think the next time I do this, I'm going to try and heat this up and knead it back together very thoroughly and I'm going to throw it into a much more um, substantial form to really crank it down and get those voids out of there. Another thing is, is that it took me a really long time to get all these milk jugs together, like a year, and process it down. There was a lot of hours put into this. So I think another installment would be that I could uh, get rain barrels. It's the same material as the milk jugs, HDB plastic, and it's so much cheaper and I think I'd take a lot less labor to process it and get it to the form that I needed. So look forward to that one. So basically that's all I got for you today. I'm going to send you home with a be humble, be helpful, and be honorable. Thanks for watching.